Are you struggling in silence, Supermom? Do you have a hard time connecting with other women and feel sometimes like maybe nobody could relate to the struggles that you're going through? Well, we have a very special Supermom's Guide too today where we are talking about being vulnerable. I feel like there is such an opportunity for us as women to connect and to share our stories with one another. Because I hear all too often about how alone you're feeling or how you just can't get past these certain struggles and they're wearing on us day in and day out. No wonder you feel like you're stuck and you're barely surviving. But there's a secret that when you can tap into this vulnerability and really allow yourself to connect with one another on a genuine level, you will unlock this gift that you never even knew existed. The struggles will seem a little less harsh and the mindset that you're all alone will slowly disappear as you realize that's never been the case. So we're gonna jump right into it today, and I hope you enjoy this conversation with an amazing super mom, Ellie. She's a fellow life coach and also helps women um, with transforming their minds and loving themselves and not feeling like they have to act or be or do anything a certain way. So I'm super excited. I This was a really powerful conversation, so I hope that you'll really listen and take it to heart. So let's start. Oh, hello, super ladies. Today I have a very special friend of mine. Her name is Ellie. She's a fellow life coach to moms. Um, I'm just super excited to really open up a really raw and honest conversation with you today, um, just in some of our struggles and our personal things and things that we see in our clients all the time that maybe we don't talk about. So. Ellie, if you could just share a little bit about who you are, um, you know, and, and what you do, that'd be great. Yeah, thank you for having me. Um, I'm excited to talk to you and to connect with other moms. So I obviously am a mom of a four-year-old. I am pregnant with my second child. I'm also a stepmom of a nine-year-old. So we're a pretty busy family. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, I've been married for two years but with my husband for six. So, um, and we currently live in New York. I do work a full-time nine to five, but I run this life coaching business um, outside of that. And it started right after my son was born, um, after being diagnosed with postpartum anxiety, mm -hmm. really going through it alone until my mom stepped in and really helped support me. Um, and just realizing that if we're not there for each other, you know, we suffer, our children suffer. And so yeah. by coaching other moms, I... I step in to help them find their path on their journey. That's awesome. Yeah. So today you'd mentioned that you um, had postpartum anxiety. I too, I didn't necessarily have the anxiety so much postpartum. I definitely had the depression. The anxiety is a new thing in my world <laughs> that just comes out of nowhere. That's a fun new party um, that I never expected. And it's so funny how, um, you know, I know we had talked before we jumped on here about how you had been dealing with it, how you realized you'd probably been kind of dealing with some of these feelings your entire life. You just didn't know what they were called or didn't have the label for them. Mm -hmm. um, so have you found that maybe, you know, there are a lot of women that may be undiagnosed with some of these that are struggling silently? Oh, yeah, for sure. I mean, you know, and we name it different things like oh i just worry a lot mm -hmm. or um you know oh that's normal that i'm just running around like a crazy woman <laughs> you know um we we tend to brush it off because mm -hmm. as society mental health is just not something we talk about often right, right. It, it's not something that is easily supported and it's almost shamed sometimes too yes very much so and so um we we don't discuss it 
Mm-hmm. And then women are suffering on this on their own. And, you know, maybe they'll Google something and all of a sudden it becomes this whole WebMD search to figure out. Oh, oh my gosh, I'm going to like explode in a minute, right? <laughs> oh my God, I'm so tired all the time. I must have an autoimmune disease or mm-hmm. something like that. But, you know, you're just, you're exhausted because your mind is always racing and, and you don't have a break from these um, feelings of anxiety. Yeah. So, because you don't have a name for it, you don't have a safe space to share that. Um, it just it just becomes an overwhelming burden. So yes, I do think that a lot of women go through this, not necessarily to a level where they may need medical support. Sure. But you know, if we don't start having these conversations, we'll never get to the root of the issues. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's funny. My depression is actually one of the reasons. It's one of the things that I think serves me best in my life and being able to connect to women, oddly enough, it started me on my coaching journey and my personal development and learning those mindset tricks and things. And that's where um, I had been after the birth of my son, I went on antidepressants and really did that postpartum depression, but it never really completely went away. You know, the doctor was kind of like, yeah, you know, you're out of that like kind of loop. And I went off the meds. And I think after that, it was like, well, I did the depression thing. I'm done with that. Right. So I don't know what these feelings are now. I I'm, I've got everything, you know, nothing's bad in my world. Why do I feel this way? You know, but I couldn't enjoy my kids. I was having a hard time. Um, you know, just the things that should make me happy. They didn't. And still to like, still to this day, there's feelings that I still have sometimes. Um, so it's, it's crazy to think that, so many of us have these and just think that we're the problem. Like there's something wrong with us. Um, And that's why I love having conversations like this to show that it's okay to be with vulnerable, to be vulnerable with each other. And that in doing that, we can share our struggles and you don't have to go through things, things alone. That's one of the amazing things about, I, I know probably as you and as me as a coach is that I get to, you know, be like, Hey, you're not alone in this. You're, you, you know, there are other people. Yeah, that's, that's a huge part. And, um, you know, I work with a lot of women of color. Um, mm-hmm. you know, I'm, I'm Latina and my husband's African American. And so, you know, these, this is the community I live in. Sure. Um, and in our communities, especially, we don't talk about these okay. things. Okay. Uh-huh. These are just not conversations that are had. And so when I do talk about it, I do see people's kind of like eyes glaze over and like shift. And, mm-hmm. you know? and so I push this idea of, you know, you're not alone. Like I wasn't alone. I thought I was alone. Sure. It yeah. feels like you're the only one in the whole world. <laughs> exactly. Right. Especially when you're home with a crying three month old and mm-hmm. no adult to talk to. Um, so there's not necessarily like a outright pushback, mm-hmm. but there's a silent like, well, that's just you. I, I don't really need to talk about yeah. it um, thing. And, and so with this work, I do get to connect with women. And, and again, it might not be where, to the extent where you and I have been, where, you know, we have, we got on meds, we, we're now dealing with this lifelong issue. Sure. Um, but it is definitely prevalent and we just have to have these conversations. So Mm -hmm. for sure. So what are the things, um, I know for me, like I, I have like a big ups and downs (laughs) in my world, like just daily, weekly, monthly, you know, it's huge ups and downs. And for me personally, I've learned as I've gotten better in my mindset practices and some of that sort of, um, more holistic approach to um, treating it and to, to living with it. It's not a treatment really. It's just to living with it. Mm-hmm. Um, what are some of the things that you do to help kind of, you know, keep going with your day? Cause we can't always just stop, even though our mind is telling you that you need to stop. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot, there's a lot that I do um, mm-hmm. because, you know, I think, I think people can look at the outside in and say, oh, her life is great. Her life is looking sure. worse. But, you know, you don't know the day to day. I mean, for for my life to look great, <laughs> mm-hmm. there's a lot of stuff that comes in. There's that. a lot of, yes. <laughs> <laughs> there's a lot of like, oh, all right, you can do this pep talks behind the scenes. Yeah, background work, breathing techniques, all that fun stuff. Um, one of my biggest saving graces is my morning routine. And, mm-hmm. um, you know, 
when I'm not consistent with it, I automatically see a shift. Okay. I automatically have an anxiety breakdown somewhere within my day. Mm -hmm. Um, And if I continue without it, then it gets even worse. So uh, my morning routine is pretty simple, but it's what works best for me. When I I first wake up, I set the timer for 10 minutes and I journal. Mm -hmm. So I just do a brain dump and just put every crazy thought that's in my head, every anger, every, (laughs) anything that could just be coming up just on paper for 10 minutes. Um, And once I do that, um, I set the timer again for 20 minutes and I meditate. Um, So I take that time now that my brain is empty Mm -hmm. to focus on finding a calm space within myself. Um, And then after that, I take 30 minutes to either exercise a walk or, or something that you know, for me, maybe I'll take a longer shower, mm-hmm. um, anything that will get me centered to myself. So that has to happen every single day for me to just be me. <laughs> <laughs> um, throughout the day, it varies, you know. So I do love tapping. And if you, if you haven't heard of tapping before, um, EFT, mm-hmm. um, it's using different um, pressure points on your body, on your face and your upper body to... Um, to coach yourself to a, a more positive space. Yeah. So I will do tapping depending on where it is. Um, one of my favorites is Brad Yates and he's easily found on YouTube. So I can quickly pull up a five minute video and do a tap and be good. Um, or I uh, do a lot of breathing techniques. So getting myself back to center. That's I awesome. think the other part of it is also recognizing my triggers. Mm-hmm. My, my son is my biggest trigger. Yeah. So if something's happening with him in a negative space, like I know I'm going to have a reaction. <laughs> so like being prepared for it, acknowledging that like, all right, this is probably what's going to happen. Right. And it's different than like living in those negative thoughts. It's being aware of the reality. <laughs> and being in tune with my body too. Mm-hmm. So, like if I feel my hand shaking, right. I know it's the beginning of something. Yeah. So, um, I think being aware, aware of your body is a big one. We don't often think about that and we don't connect to it. So we, um, so for me, it's taken a lot to diagnose yeah. for myself what my triggers are. So um, if I get a headache, if I, my hands are shaking. So that's, those are my, all my different tools and, and points. Little warning signs, yeah, to kind of prepare yourself for it. Mm-hmm. I think that's been a big shift for me as well is acknowledging that, all right, this is when I'm going to feel like it for me. Um, in the last year or so, my, my kind of lows are typically they've been hormonal. Um, you know, as women, again, another thing we don't talk about all the time is like how crazy our hormones can make us. And so I, I know like mine, it, it goes, it dips at a certain time of the month. And so I've been able to, you know, I plan my, my business around it. I plan my coaching calls around it. Um, I make sure that for that, you know, it's usually like a week period where I'm really just low and, you know, I'll make sure that there's nothing, no big events and things like that are scheduled because I'm not in my, my best state to be presentable. Um, a lot of people, if you ever, you know, there's so much stuff on social media, but like you probably won't see me online those weeks. <laughs> I'll type a lot because I write a ton. I journal um, and I utilize that time. Like I've used, I've learned to use it. I do it to, to content create or, um, you know, or just to journal for myself and, and kind of write things like that. But just allowing yourself, I'll sleep in and I'll let myself sleep till noon every day that week. Um, I, you know, my, luckily my kids are a little bigger now, so <laughs> I don't have to be up at the crack of dawn. <laughs> I'm very lucky at that point. Um, they, they're, you know, getting a little older and content to themselves. Obviously, when they're there, I've, I'm a single parent. So um, I, I have them half of the time. So that first part of the week when they're with their dad, I'm just like, all right, I, I have this space, so I'm going to utilize it. Um, you know, let's take a bath, go get a massage, go get a pedicure, just go for a walk, get lost. I love nature. Anything in nature is going to like help get my head back where it needs to be. And exercise is always one of those body and mind kind of feel good things as well. I love that you mentioned um, managing your time around your cycle. Um, Mm -hmm. I can't remember the name of the author, but this is something I do want to study next. I mean, after I give birth and come back to center. I mean, you don't have enough stuff to do. Come on. 
<laughs> no, but there, <laughs> there is a, stu- um, you know what, if I can find it in a sentence to you so you can share with your, with your listeners. Yeah. Um, but there's um, a book out that talks about that, like okay. managing your life around your menstrual cycle mm-hmm. um, so that you are working at your peak times and then relaxing on your, your low. Right. Um, because we just, I, I mean, this is all society driven, but we just push ourselves and push ourselves. And even if we're feeling crappy, we just keep pushing ourselves because we think we have to. And, we and don't. that's usually when I end up snapping at my kids because I decided to go plan a vacation on that week or, you know, or go somewhere where I knew it, it's a normal high stress kind of place. Right. You know, it's always fun to take your kids and we love adventures and stuff, but it is stressful sometimes. Mm-hmm. And so it's like when you're already knowing that you're in that kind of anxious place, you're just setting yourself up for failure. So now, yeah, okay, you went to, you know, the mountains and went for a hike, but you're fussing at your kids, you're miserable, they're crying. <laughs> it's just like, why did we do this to ourselves? <laughs> what memory are you creating there? Like, yeah. They're going to remember cranky mommy. Uh, uh-huh. So it, it's totally, if you can be aware of when your stuff is, you can, you know, make the most of wherever you're at, whether it's the high, whether it's the low, whether it's whatever, you know, in between you're at. Um, I think it kind of helps everybody. So another thing, and we kind of touched on it is, but what do you think personally, just from talking to your clients and things, what do you think is like that driving force, that thing that um, makes us afraid to ask for help? So often we sit here and we struggle on our own and we don't talk to anybody have you been able to pinpoint sort of a certain thing for why these women aren't reaching out I mean, it's mostly shame it's just you know the word that comes to mind is almost bullying it's it's not that we bully each other blatantly you know but um especially on the online space like mm-hmm. you know, the person is vulnerable there's so many others who are so quick to attack yeah um and then if they in turn are attacked, they feel like the victim, but you just victimize someone. Um, so I think we just have come to believe that any sharing any weaknesses is wrong, right? Asking for help is wrong. Um, being vulnerable is wrong. <laughs> so these messages happen over time. And I think, um, you know, obviously they come up with us from childhood. Mm-hmm. I don't know about you, but like I was told children are seen, not heard, right? So if I was upset and crying, I had to do it on my own in my room and nobody could hear me because that would be bad. Okay. So, and then not because my mother was a bad parent, that's just the message she got. Mm-hmm. And so she gave it to me. Um, sure, so- that's a great point. The things that are passed down to us that we hang on to. Exactly. And so I, I think we're, we're in an amazing time though where a lot of women are awakening to the fact that this doesn't have to be the case, right? Yeah. Um, you know, and a lot of the, and most of the women I work with are in their mid to late thirties, early forties. Um, so it's taking us some time to figure that out, right? Like we got the message that we can go to school, make a career, enjoy your twenties, right? We, we got all that. <laughs> and now we're here in our thirties, forties, and we're like, well, what about, me inside Mm -hmm. i did all that now now i'm not still not feeling good though (laughs) right um and so people are starting to waken up to the fact that you know self-care um and Mm self-awareness are important um but it is you know 30 odd years of this messaging that you know it's okay if you make a career but it's not okay if you complain that you worked 80 hours this week and you're exhausted right? Mm -hmm. Or that um, you need a two week vacation to unplug, right? Like, yeah, saying that you need that is almost wrong. It's selfish. Yes. Yeah, exactly. And it's it's not it's like when you take the time to fill yourself up and, and take care of yourself, you're a better vessel to give and do all the things that that you do want to do. Because that's I think, the hardest part is we want to do it all. Most of us are givers and we're that, you know, I know I personally have like that servant's heart and I want to give all the time, but if you don't take care of yourself, There's you no can't way. serve that. You can't share your message or not long term. And I, and for moms especially, that's so hard. Mm-hmm. Uh, 
I mean, in, in my experiences, um, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we are also told that once you have kids, they always come first. Mm -hmm. I don't believe that. <laughs> you know, I, I love my son to, to forever. I mean, absolutely. Number one priority, but he isn't my number one priority every minute of every day. Mm -hmm. So if that means that he has to go to daycare today because mommy needs a break, he has yeah. to go to daycare. Doesn't mean I love him any less. Doesn't mean he's any less of a priority. Mm -hmm. it's just that I need time for myself. Yeah. Um, and I think when I say that, people are like, whoa, <laughs> you know. It's, it's that society kind of notion yeah. thing. That yeah. PC, everybody's got their opinions. It's like, what kind of cool. Yeah. yeah. You don't have to agree with me, but I totally, totally see what you're saying. And it's like, if you, it's not a bad thing. Who was it? It was a book I was reading on parenting and, and it was actually about our relationships and how a lot of times we'll put our, um, it was a controversial book, obviously, but about putting your spouse above your kids. Mm -hmm. um, and it's a little bit different. I think sometimes, sometimes with a blended family and things, you know, situations are all unique and different, but your kids are with you for 20 years, right? Your spouse hopefully is going to be with you for your whole life. So you can't completely neglect yourself. I mean, and you're obviously with yourself your whole life. You can't neglect, your, you know, these other really big support systems and priorities in your life just because you have kids. Right. Um, and I'm glad that you brought up the marriage piece. I mean, being married, um, it's been a lesson for me, right, mm -hmm. that even though my son's only four, he's already very independent. Um, as far as like, he has his own activities, he has his own mm -hmm. friends already, you know, yeah. all these things happening, which means that all of a sudden my husband and I have more time to each other, which, which is wonderful. Um, but I can see that whole empty nest syndrome where you're, you know, you've been with this person for 20 years and you look at them and you're like, who are you? Mm -hmm. Well, who am I? Right. Because you spent all that time putting your energies on your children mm -hmm. that you completely neglected your own priorities. And now you're figuring out life again. Yeah. Um, so, so yeah, so, so we're, so we're put in these positions. Um, so all that to say, it's like my biggest message when working with clients, is like you decide what your life in, is and what your story is. Mm -hmm. Like you've got all these messages and you're going to get messages from me as well. Right. right. You have to decide for yourself what makes the most sense mm -hmm. for you. Um, and the only way to heal yourself is by making those decisions. And I find that that's often the hardest part for clients. It's like, Oh yeah. We want the answers. Yeah. Exactly. Tell me what to do and I'll do it. Right. But I can't tell you because my answers are not your answers. Exactly. Right. I can guide you. I can support you. I can absolutely you options. But it's your decision what you want your life to look like. You know, if you want a house, go buy the house. If you want to travel, go travel. Like, you know, neither is wrong. Mm -mm. Um, what is wrong is that you followed what society told you to do. And five years down the line, you're miserable. You're miserable. You're dragging yourself out of bed. Your kids don't have fun with you. Like you just I wouldn't say it's wrong, but it, cause it's so easy to go down that path, but it's not the best path, you know, and it's, well, you're going to end up feeling burnt out at the end of it. What I say, when I say wrong, I meant like what feels wrong. Right? Yeah. What okay. Feels draining. What feels negative is like, yes, you're waking up and saying, what is my life right now? Mm -hmm. Because you no longer recognize yourself. You don't know if recognize your life. You don't recognize um, what brings you joy anymore. That's where a lot of my clients come to me and we work. It's like, all right, so, you know, you've been mom for all this time. You've been doing everything or everybody else. And then you, all of a sudden you're like, who the heck am I? I'm miserable. I don't like myself. So like we dig into like, who are you now? Like, where do you want to go? Figuring out goals. And then of course, like the support and the mindset and all that kind of stuff that goes along with getting you there. <laughs> Cause it's a process. It is a big process. And, um, and, and I find that, to be the hardest jumping point is like who is answering that question like who am I now mm -hmm. <laughs> um because we're all quick well I find we're all quick to say I'm I'm a mom now 
<laughs> you know, but, yep. but, but you're a whole woman aside from yeah. a being a mom. You so. strip all the labels off. Who yeah. are you at your core? Yeah. Mm -hmm. what, what are your priorities? What brings you joy? What brings you sadness? What, um, what do you enjoy in life? So. Yeah. And those are going to change throughout your life. That's, you know, you don't have to stay the same person and you won't, you know, hopefully you're growing. If you're, you know, trying to improve yourself and doing all these things, hopefully you're growing and you're changing and you're expanding. So, um, I have my power class is what I call it, where we really dig into that. And it's like, take these tools and, you know, a year from now, go through it again. Because you're probably going to be a different person, you know, and 10 years from now, you're definitely going to be a big person because I've, we want it to be this one and done kind of thing. All right. I did the work. I'm there now. Here's who I am. But you probably will hit another place where you're like, I'm feeling lost again. So it's like, that's where I love coaching so much is because, you know, one, I can hold your hand during that, that period and help you work through some of that and accelerate the process and like make it a lot less painful, mm -hmm. but it's not a forever thing. Like you're still going to have to continue with these practices. Well, you know, how we started this conversation around like, um, how do I, how do we live with our anxiety? Right. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not that you get a medication and all of a sudden, Hey, you're, you're better awesome. now. <laughs> I'm, I'm, not, I'm no longer an anxious person. I'm no longer <laughs> depressed. No, this is ongoing work. And just in the same way you have to keep working on your physical health, right? Yeah. It's, this is an emotional, um, soul driven work that is ongoing. It doesn't just end. Um, and you may find that because you set a goal for yourself for two years from now, you meet that goal and it no longer fits. Yeah. And you have to be okay with that because you worked for it. You're there. You can celebrate it. But now your view on life has shifted. So, you know, that goal doesn't feel right. So, um, so then you get a Yeah, I was going to say, it's okay to get there and be like, wait a minute, this isn't what I thought it was. Right. Sometimes, like, we've announced it. We've done it. I know in business all the time. I'm like, but I said I was going to do this, but it doesn't feel good to me anymore. And it's like, I don't want to jump here, but... This is more where, you know, it's going and it's okay to change your mind. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> I think that's hard for people um, sometimes. And I, and I was thinking about that this morning because, you know, I, I, I'm, I've been an educator my, my whole career, um, but I have a degree in engineering and then right. I run this side business. And so I'm saying all that because, um, I was talking to someone who's been in my life for a mentor who's been in my life for a long time. And they're like, you can't sit still. You're always changing what you're doing. And I'm like, yeah, but I'm always changing, right? Like who I was at 18 when I decided my college major is nowhere who I am now. Um, and I can't look at life in the same way that I did then. So, um, so that's okay. <laughs> that's yeah, perfectly fine. And I think it's different from, changing because you feel the different thing and being like one of those indecisive can't ever make a decision kind of places because it's like no i've decided i know this is right mm -hmm. and that's okay i think certain personalities are just more susceptible to that like i never feel settled and i'm good with that like that's just me i don't want to feel settled because i feel like i'm gonna be bored <laughs> like there's always something changing and i love that because it always gives me something to like be excited about or to look forward to and it's not for everybody some people are perfectly happy and and you know when they're you know, they're set in their ways and that's okay too. Whichever, you know, end of the spectrum you end up on, you just got to listen to you and what your, your mind and your body and your soul is telling you. I love, and I love how you said it. It is, you know, there is a, those people who are indecisive and that's how they roll. Um, but it is about making the decision, right? Mm -hmm. So if your decision is to, you know, stay a doctor for the rest of your life, wonderful. That's yeah. your decision. Um, but if your decision is to make, you know, choose a career path now or choose a partner now and mm -hmm. a few years it has to change, then that's another decision you need to make. Yep. Um, but I, but I, what, what I do want to emphasize, though, is that the importance of making a decision. Mm -hmm. That's your decision, yep. you know, <laughs> that you can stand by, um, that you feel good about, 
not a decision that was made for you or influenced you um, by someone else. So, absolutely. Yeah. Well, cool. Thank you so much for jumping on here. This has been like an amazing conversation, and I'm excited just to, you know, hopefully it will just open some doors and some conversations with the women that that hear this. Um, as we move forward, how can any of our audience who maybe resonates with you, how can they find you if they want are interested in your coaching? Yeah, um, you can find me on my website at chooseyoulove.com um, or you can find me on Facebook, um, Choose You Love One. And um, those are the places I'm most active on, so they can definitely go on there. Cool. And I've got one more question I like to ask everyone at the end of the show What is your superpower? My superpower um, <laughs> is seeing a, I don't know. <laughs> superpower. I mean, it's, it's, it's kind of dor dorky, I guess, but um, that's okay. Seeing a clear course of action and, and taking it. So that's awesome. You know, just within the chaos, I can break that apart, mm -hmm. find a course of action and then go for it. So that's yeah. great, great one. <laughs> Yay, thank you so much. I really, I really enjoyed um, getting to chat with you and, and hang out. Thank um, you, you made this feel so comfortable. I love this, this is great. Thank you, thank you. you can get something great out of this and get the help that they need from whoever they feel they need to get it from. Absolutely. What a joy it was to have this raw conversation with Ellie. She's amazing, right? She's nine months pregnant and still kicking butt. So I hope that this touched you in a way and hopefully inspired you to don't wait to get help if you need a coach, to open up to a friend about something that maybe you've been a little bit scared to talk about, to share your stories and your struggles of your depression, your anxiety, your fears, your confidence issues, whatever that it is that you might be struggling with in your life. I'm so excited that we've been able to remove the mask just a little bit more on this topic. And I encourage you to do the same in your life. So as a special treat today, one, I of course always want to remind you that you can sign up to get these episodes, a new episode every Tuesday in your inbox by going to searchingforsuperpower.com slash S-M-G-T-M, Super Mom's Guide to Mindset. Um, it'll pop up on you when you jump over there. Uh, but that way you can get it straight to your inbox every week. And of course, I'm talking about connection today. So find me on Facebook. Obviously, you sort of kind of found me because you're here. But reach out to me. I love, love, love to have powerful connections and conversations with new women and it really fills me up to be able to empower you to do whatever it is that you know you were meant to do so keep searching ladies share these vulnerable moments in your life and watch how your life will change for the better take care and have a great week Mwah. Hey again, super lady. I wanted to put a little disclaimer on the end of this episode. We talked a lot about anxiety and depression disorders, and I just wanted to be super clear that coaching in no way is a substitute for medical help. I'm not a doctor and I'm not pretending to be. So if you're having these feelings and you feel like they might be a little bit more than the norm, please get medical help help. Plus the advice and the tools that Ellie and I spoke about in this episode, they've worked for us, but it doesn't necessarily mean that they're going to work for you. So while coaching is a great supplement, it never hurts to get a professional medical opinion. I hope that this truly empowers you to take ownership of your life and that it can give you the permission to seek out help if you need it. I love you so much and I believe in you. So go get searching for that superpower.